For every aircraft, a minimum equipment list exists to specify the minimum equipment required for safe aircraft operation. This list will identify the items on an aircraft that cannot be inoperable when you want to dispatch the aircraft. We're not talking about failures happening in flight or after you've commenced the flight. We're talking about before the aircraft is taken for the flight. Minimum equipment list exists for all aircraft, but they are very simple for small aircraft and mostly relates to the requirements of operational equipment as per the operation itself. VFR flying, IFR flying, if an aircraft is used for aerobatic purposes or instructional purposes, flight training, etc. So that's easy to identify. But when an aircraft becomes complex, like the one we are operating, then it is no longer up to the individual pilots to identify if certain things can be inoperable or not. Therefore, the manufacturer and the operator work together to specify these things in what we call a minimum equipment list. The minimum equipment list manual, if you will, is applicable only until the aircraft commences flight. And that means once the aircraft has commenced its flight, the MEL is no longer the appropriate manual for that specific faulty equipment or failure. But until that point, even during taxi, until we start the flight, we apply power with the attempt to take off, the MEL is indeed applicable. So that means prior to takeoff, any failure is subject to pilot judgment. But that judgment should include the MEL to finalize the decision whether or not we can continue the flight. Abnormal checklists, ECAM action should always be applied first to deal with the failure before looking to the MEL to see if we can actually continue the flight for the day. The crew should apply the specified MEL limitations, if any. This could be limitations to take off landing, fuel, etc. And if the L requires any maintenance to be done, well, then the aircraft is not dispatchable, meaning it's not operational until that has been carried out. In flight, however, the MEL is no longer the appropriate manual to determine whether or not you can continue the flight, at least not necessarily. See, we refer to the FCOM and the QRH and as well, of course, the ECAM actions for any in-flight failure we might have. And so the MEL is not going to tell us what we need. However, pilots should always refer to the MEL, even in-flight, because it will and can have a big impact after you land. If you fly to a destination and you land, if that faulty equipment does not allow the aircraft to be dispatched, well, then you are stranded there and no longer able to fly the aircraft to the next destination or even to come home, even if that purpose is to do maintenance. What we need to do when referring to the MEL is determine whether or not the aircraft is better off maybe diverting back to where we came from where maintenance can be done, or to divert to another airport where maintenance is available. If the MEL specifies that no maintenance is required, well then we might just be able to fly the aircraft for a certain amount of days before maintenance or procedures have to be carried out. All of this we will specify when we look at the individual chapters. Let's look at the layout of the MEL. The minimum equipment list might be part of your electronic flight bag, but the layout will be all the same. The MEL has four chapters. The first chapter is the how to use chapter. The how to use chapter is used to identify what the information within the chapters mean. That's the information I'm going to be bringing forward to you in this presentation. And it's divided into three chapters for the actual MEL use. And that includes the MEL entries, ME, the MEL items, MI chapter, and the MO, the MEL Operational Procedure chapter. 
only one chapter here is the actual MEL, and that is the MI, the Minimum Equipment List Items chapter. The other two chapters are supporting chapters for the MEL part. The Operational Procedure chapter you see right here supports what needs to be done in order for us to dispatch the aircraft with faulty equipment. And the ME, the MEL entries, will be a way for pilots based on an ECAM to identify what items they need to refer to. Both of them are supporting chapters to the actual MEL, which is the MI. And with that in mind, let's look at how to use the MEL. We will look at two scenarios, and there will be basically two scenarios that can make you refer to an MEL prior to commencing an operational flight. And that is if you get an ECAM alert anytime during your pre-flight preparation before takeoff, all the way up to the takeoff position point where you apply power for takeoff. If you have an ECAM alert, you will refer to the ME chapter. But during your pre-flight, you also check the aircraft and should there be anything that is broken or unoperational, but does not trigger, for example, an ECAM, well then we refer to the Minimum Equipment List Items chapter, the MI, for that particular faulty equipment. So we can refer or have to refer to the MEL based on an ECAM alert or based on observed faulty equipment or item. It's a little bit different how we refer based on the two scenarios. So let's talk them through one by one. If you have a failure that is triggering an ECAM, so a monitored system, you will then refer to the MEL as part of your decision-making process after having completed all the ECAM actions and that will refer you directly with the failure title to the ME chapter, the MEL entries chapter. From the MEL entries chapter, it may then refer you to the item which is faulty, that is the MI chapter. If there's no dispatch, it will stop right here and say the aircraft is not dispatchable with this failure. If not, it will refer you to the MI chapter. This is the actual MEL part of the manual. If there is then anything that needs to be carried out maintenance-wise or operational-wise by the crew prior to us taking that aircraft for dispatch, that might then refer you to the MO, the Operational Procedures chapter. So when you have an ECAM, you will start with the ME chapter, that will refer you to the MI chapter, and then that might refer you to the MO chapter. But that's not certain that that last part is part of your procedure. If you, on the other hand, have faulty equipment, that could be a quack windshield, or it could be a bent pitot tube, or it could be a faulty seat or faulty seat belt or door, anything that is not triggered into an ECAM alert, well, then you will go directly to the MI chapter, to the actual part of the MEL. The MI chapter will list all the equipment system by system and allow you to identify easily which system we are talking about. And again, that MEL item might then refer you to an operational procedure if there's anything we need to be aware of for the continuation of that operation. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the hundreds of videos we made available on professional aviation content, head on to our academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We'll be putting up these videos regularly.